Hello and welcome back to Night Parade, the show where we watch anime and talk about it for your entertainment. I'm Fat Man. And I'm Fanny Rose. And tonight we're talking about Blue Exorcist. I love this show. This is the anime that got me into reading manga. Huh. This show came out when I was in high school, and I fell in love with it. For the most part, we'll talk about that. Blue Exorcist is an ongoing manga series that started in April 2009, written and illustrated by Kazu Kato, and published by Shueisha. It has since been adapted into two seasons of anime by A1 Pictures, the first of which came out in April of 2011, followed by season two six years later. Jesus, what a long ass wait. It was torture. We thought there was never going to be more. Which is kind of why I started reading the manga. There was also a movie and a few OVAs, which I haven't seen yet. So, this show is loosely based on Catholicism. Loosely, it uses it just to seem cool, and I love it. With a bit of Buddhism and a few other religions thrown in. And it's beautiful. It is great. So in this show, there are two parallel worlds, Gehenna and Asaya, that are mirror to one another. Demons come from Gehenna, and humans come from Asaya. And there typically isn't any interaction between the two worlds, but demons can cross over by possessing living creatures, objects, or by being summoned. And... Yeah. Our story re revolves around a kid named Rin Okumura, who is the son of a human and a demon. That demon just so happens to be the king of all demons, Satan. There's that uh, loose... Thing uh, coming in right there. <laughs> yeah. Rin was raised by Father Shiro Fujimoto as who a... Who is cool. Oh, yeah. He is a kick-ass priest. He was raised all of his life to be a normal human, not even knowing of the demons that reside in the world. But one day, his powers activated, and... Well, I'm gonna stop us right now and uh, throw a spoiler warning out here, because... We will spoil anything and everything. I enjoy this show, and... Well for the most part. <laughs> and if you haven't seen this, I recommend uh, watching at least the first 16 episodes before listening to this, because, well, we'll get into that in a bit. So one day his powers activate, he can start seeing demons, and, uh, well, shit hits the fan. Uh-huh. A powerful demon recognizes that he is the child of Satan and assaults the church he's living at, awakening his true demon powers and killing Father Fujimoto in the process. I miss him already. <sighs> I'm not saying Rin killed Fujimoto, but he kinda did. I wouldn't say that. It was Fujimoto's mental fortitude that was keeping Satan from p possessing him. And his fight with Rin weakened that and allowed him to be possessed. Mm hmm But Rin didn't know that. Uh, I feel bad. It makes sense. So, when Rin was born, uh, his power, the blue flames of the spawn of Satan, were sealed into the Kurikara, the demon slaying sword, and that is where his powers come from. When the sword is sheathed, he looks relatively human. He's got pointy ears and has to hide his tail, but when the sword is unsheathed, he is covered by blue flames, long pointy ears. It's crazy. Yeah. And the reason uh, that he is targeted so much is because I guess he is... Oh, he's a unique case because he has the body of a human but the blood of a demon. The blood of Satan. The... He, he, I, I feel like he's 
more demon than human well human than demon at the moment. Yeah. But normally a demon would have to possess a human to be in the human world. But he is both. So he well, Satan wants him because he would be the perfect vessel for him in the human world. And the exorcists want him so they can, well, kill him and prevent that from happening. Oh, uh, I should also mention, Rin has a twin brother, Yukio. Who's one of my favorite characters. He is a prodigy of an exorcist. He was raised since he was seven, I believe, by uh, Father Fujimoto to become a exorcist. Because... As children, uh, Yukio received a spirit wound from Rin. Spirit wound is a, a wound received from a demon that allows you to see... Ghosts and shit. Otherwise invisible creatures. Yeah, essentially ghosts and shit. Yeah. This could so easily been a horror anime. <laughs> it's real angsty. This is the second most angsty anime I've ever seen. <laughs> it's in second place, because I've seen some real angsty shit. <laughs> no wonder I fell in love with it in high school. Because you're an angsty teenager? Absolutely. Well, you were? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, you're right. I was just hated and cynical. So... At Father Fujimoto's funeral, Rin meets... Our homie... Mephisto Fellas. I love this guy. He is the headmaster of the True Cross Academy, and also another implied son of Satan. So... Wait, implied? I think it's flat out sad. Is it? Yeah, towards the end of season two, he essentially says, ah, My little brother is interesting. Yeah. Or something along those lines, referring to Rin. Yeah. When he was talking with the Earth King, uh, they called each other brothers, and... What is the Earth King's name again? I don't remember. A Maimon or something? Yeah, a Maimon. <laughs> yeah, I forget. Yeah, it was like a Maimon or some shit. When he was talking to Amaimon, uh, they called each other brothers, and Amaimon referred to Satan as father. Yeah. Sir Felis shows up to give Rin a few choices. Uh, be killed by them, kill them and run away, or kill himself. Wonderful options, right? Yeah. But then Rin's like, fuck you, uh, make me an exorcist so I can kick Satan's ass. <laughs> and thus begins our story of the spawn of Satan training to become an exorcist so he can kill him for killing his foster father. I, I wouldn't say he killed him. Yeah, Fujimoto took his own life after being possessed, but he was going to... His body wasn't going to last long anyways. That's true. Being possessed by Satan is... Pretty much a death sentence. Yeah. At least he... did the thing with the... to stop the whole Satan thing. Yeah. Here's something that I only picked up on while researching today. <laughs> Mephisto Fellas. Look at that name. Get rid of the space between it. Mephistopheles? Mephistopheles. 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 I... <laughs> cannot believe I didn't pick up on that earlier. So clever. It's it's really not that clever. I know. I feel like a fool. Like you feel like a damn clown? Uh... Is this a joke to you? It makes sense that you wouldn't notice it right away. I, I had to see it written out on paper to realize it. So, Rin starts going to this True Cross Academy exorcist cram school. 
The main okay. face of the school is just a normal rich kid high school, but behind the facade, it is also a school to train young exorcists. Because yeah. demon stuff is not really... It's, it's not public knowledge. So Rin has to go to class, learn to be an exorcist, and keep his identity hidden because... There are a lot of people out there that would want to kill him if they found out he was the spawn of Satan. Uh, yeah, there, there are many. There are there some are teachers. Many. Yeah, there are some teachers, there are some students, Yeah. other members of the church. That hot chick you know from class. So, anime goes by, they take some classes, get into some fights. Rin is an idiot and almost reveals his identity several times. Over the course of his time at the academy. And it's quite a sight to behold watching all those fuck ups. <laughs> we meet some awesome characters along the way. We meet Best Girl. We meet Ryuji. Who's... I actually think Ryuji is my favorite character. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know why. I just like him. He has some strong character development over the course of the show. Well, mainly in the second season, but... Oh, uh, but we will talk about the character development. And the lack of it in one part. So, Shami, best girl, uh, she knows a lot about plants, she's shy and sheltered, and uh, she just wants to help people and make friends. Yeah. We've got Izumo Kamiki. She's a summoner, uses fox spirits, and just kind of... Does the cute... Does the fox... seem very good shit. Yeah, she is, uh... Really didn't care for her in the first season. I don't like her at all. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Konakamaru. Short and bald kid. Uh... I, I don't really care about him. I don't know. He just didn't stand out to me too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shit, what's his name? That character that you like. Ryuji. Ryuji. Of his classmates, besides Best Girl, Ryuji, I think, is my favorite. He just has the most... He has the most development. The second season is kind of centered around him. Second season is censored around Ryuji, and I like it. A little over halfway through the show, Rin is backed into a corner by a Maimon, who is attacking him and his friends. And in order to save them, he has to reveal his powers to them. Kicks the shit out of a Maimon, which is a demon king. Just shows you how freaking powerful Rin is without barely any training. That's, uh, that's some scary shit right there. Yeah. He, he is going to be the most powerful exorcist someday. Potentially. And, well, here is where, oh, here, here is where I start to be heavily opinionated. Starting at episode 16, the anime starts breaking off from the manga. Starts going in a completely different direction changing the plot, throwing all character development out the window. And then we- I refuse to watch those nine episodes. Yeah, we didn't watch the last nine episodes. I've seen them before. I remembered most of what happens. But instead of sitting through those nine episodes, we decided to watch season two, which was just 12. So, you don't know this. I'm going to talk about what happens in the last nine episodes. I didn't watch them because I, I think at the time the quote was, there are things I could be doing instead of watching the next nine episodes. Nine episodes of your life you would never get back. Yeah. I'll never get back. Nine episodes that I'd rather watch Boku no Pico. <sighs> Don't say such things. <laughs> Don't say such things. <laughs> no. There is no crueler of fate. <laughs> than, than that show. We will not speak of it. Sorry, it, I speak of the wackest of shit that I see. <laughs> or, or not necessarily seen, but like, know of, you know? Mm -hmm. So, TLDR, last nine episodes. 
the crazy evil Pope wants to use Rin's power to open up the gate to hell and nuke it. Which is a kind of weird plan, but I think it'll work. Uh, the problem is Gehenna and Asaya are parallel worlds, mirror worlds. If one is destroyed, so is the other. And he's a dumbass and wants to do it anyway. Yes. I can't remember exactly how that ended, but Yukio suddenly awakens to his demonic powers and in a in a Sentai-like final attack, the two combine their powers and take out the Pope. So, they fight the Pope? They fight the Pope. I love it. It's so dumb. <laughs> and it's inconsequential because six years later, season two came out and picks up right where episode 16 left off. Retconning the last nine episodes of season one. Because it was so Ooh. bad, they're not going to even acknowledge it happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. no, no, I stand by that Boku no Pico decision. <laughs> no! If it's watching a shit fucking ending, I'd rather watch um terrible hentai. The thing that bothers me most about this is that, well, I'm okay when an anime differs from the manga. As long as it's good. If it tells a story that is equally good or better than the manga, I will praise it. But the last nine episodes of season one threw out a bunch of character development and gave a... felt like a half-assed story. In the manga, and what shows in season two, when Rin's friends find out that he is the child of Satan, the evil demon god that has ruined so many of their lives, killed loved ones, wreaked havoc upon Asaya. They freak out. They want to distance themselves from him. They- Justifiably so. Some of them just hate him for a while, and they spend the majority of season two getting over that and regaining trust in him. But in the latter- Nine episodes of season one, they just immediately trust him again. He's being put on trial because the higher-ups found out he's the son of Satan. And his friends rush in and try to save him. And they're all happy-go-lucky about it, but I, it doesn't make That's any not sense. That's how these things work. No. And the thing about Yukio having demon powers is just thrown out there and not used very well. Him having those is hinted at in season two, in and I expect it to develop pretty well. I haven't read too much further in the manga, because the last time I read it was back when the Kyoto Saga was wrapping up in the manga. But, yeah, I, I see it having a lot more potential being used correctly in the manga. I'm looking forward to reading it more after after this. You are? Yeah. I didn't really get to reading the manga too much past couple of days, because I've been di distracted with other things, but I'm definitely going to start reading the manga again. So yeah, those are my thoughts. I mean, it's a very neat show, and I had, like, lots of fun with it. I enjoy the characters, the visuals are pretty cool, really stepped up their game in Season 2. Fight scenes are baller. Oh, also, yeah. Also, is one thing I just can't. Okay? Ah. Uh. My primary complaint is I just can't get over Shiro's titties. <laughs> that, that, mm -mm, that bra looks uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I'll, I'll take your word for it. I don't have any experience with bras or titties, but. It, it just seems like it. They're, they're not on right. It's not... Usually I don't mind, but it's just so bad. It's barely covering Compared, up anything. It, it barely covers a boob. Shura is the exorcist that has taken Rin under her wing to teach him how to use his demon sword and control his powers. She I also has giant boobs and barely wears any clothes. I mean, I love her because she's great. Yeah, she's a really cool character. 
I just don't... It just looks uncomfortable. <laughs> that is all. It's it's simply discomfort that I see when I look at that. Shura was trained by Father Fujimoto. Father Fujimoto's the fucking shit. Fujimoto was the previous paladin <clears throat> that is the highest rank of exorcist. There's only one. The strongest that there is. And... Having learned that, Rin's new goal is to become the paladin and take his father's place. Kick Satan's ass. For you. Yep. You mentioned your voice, Confesto, yeah? Oh, haven't done that yet. Confesto's voice actor's had his hands in a lot of pies. Mmm, pie. Mephisto Felis is voiced by Hiroshi Kamiya, who also happens to play... My favorite character from One Piece, Trafalgar Law. Uh, aside from Law, he also plays Otanashi from Angel Beats, which was surprising. Oh. And Izaya, which is not surprising. We'll get to Angel Beats someday. And the best I'll just sort of have that, um, Izaya energy. Hmm. In a good way, you know? Some good old Isaiah energy right there. I loved Mephesto. I have a question for you. What? Uh, Demons can only enter our world by possessing things or by summoning. And the more powerful a demon is, the harder it is to summon, or the stronger vessel it needs to be possessing, I guess. Yeah. So what about a Maimon and Mephesto? Were they summoned, or are they possessing humans? That's a good question. I didn't think about that until now, but... You were not thinking about that one? Mm-mm. Are there physical bodies in Asaya, or are they just possessing humans? Have they been summoned? Is there something special about them being demon kings that lets them travel between worlds? And are if, they just weirdo? And if that's the case, how come Satan couldn't enter Asaya? Yeah. Questions that need answers that are probably in the manga, but... Mm, well, sometimes you're not up to date. Yeah. Uh, it, I know for one a fact that I... When I try to get up to date on some of the stuff I want to read or enjoy, it's long. Long, lengthy... And difficult reads. Yeah. But there, that's because of the type of shit I like. There are 113 chapters as of August 5th, 2019. I, I plan on reading it all from the beginning again, but mm. I've read up to around chapter 34. So, mm. still the majority of the manga to catch up on, but I've... I know the whole story up until 34. 34 also is where uh, the Kyoto Saga wraps up in the anime of Season 2. Kyoto Saga's ending pretty sick. Yeah, it was. But that's because it had a lot of things I enjoy. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Wh what are those things? Uh, traitors, a little bit of the fun stuff, like, just, it... I liked the fight scenes in it, and I liked how it wasn't just a lot of fighting, but a lot of, like, trying to, like, like character development. Yeah. there There's a fair bit of fighting in this, but I feel that the majority of it is character-driven. Yeah, which is nice. Hmm. What was your favorite moment from this? My favorite moment from this is... I, I really liked when, um... Eric and, um, Ryuji put up the barrier, because that shit was just... That was cool a bit of a looking. spectacle. Yeah, just the spectacle of that one. I really enjoyed Rin's last fight with Amaimon, when he's <laughs> pursuing him all, DBZ style, jumping through the air, fast attacks. <laughs> Kicked his ass. And then Mephisto tried to rescue a Maimon and hide him from Rin, and Rin just cut through his spell and started going after Mephisto. 
but I love Mephisto. He is... I'm really interested in seeing what what exactly his plan is. Because everything seems to be going as planned for him so far. Yeah. Is he truly on the side of good? Probably not. He's just so... He, he's so good at playing the part. Yeah. He's sly and manipulative and so charismatic. It, that's, that's what I love seeing in a villain. We don't truly know his motives, and that that's what makes him so interesting. Another one of my favorite parts is when Rin got friend-zoned. I mean, I wouldn't say he's friend-zoned as much as fast girl can say words to save her life. <laughs> it was a very funny moment, though. <laughs> oh, and... <laughs> at the end of season two, when they're all going around... Uh, visiting the tourist traps in Kyoto. <laughs> uh, that's just... That was one of my favorite things. And they, they, they keep saying like, Oh, we have to do what he says or else he'll kill us because he's the son of Satan. He'll just burn us alive. And he's like, Guys, <laughs> please <laughs> stop! <laughs> and then they take this, the, the picture with him and they spell out <laughs> Satan with their body. <laughs> <laughs> even it Yuki is so great. Even Yukio was in on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love this. I mean, that was my favorite part too. <laughs> I really hope we get a third season of this, and I can't wait to read more. There's always rumors going around about new seasons, but... Uh... I want this... so bad. Please give me more. Please give you a... <sighs> There's also a rumor that the manga's gonna end in 2023, but... I hope not. Unless it ends on a good place. Because everything has to end eventually, I guess. Unfortunately. Except One Piece, that's never ending. Except for when the author gets old. Yeah. Then but... we'll end it when he feels like it. Yeah. Well, Ara JoJo's is never ending because Araki's a vampire. <laughs> and I'm sure you know this. Yeah. You know Araki's a vampire. So, I'm gonna give Blue Exorcist a 7 out of 10 for its first season. And a 9 out of 10 for its second. So, 8 out of 10 overall. I like it, but it's something I wouldn't have watched without someone urging me to do it. Gotcha. I definitely rate it so high because it's it's, it's nostalgic for me. And I have gone back and rewatched it several times. That makes sense, but I give it like a 7 maybe? That's fair. Say a 7. Well, you can check out Blue Exorcist on Crunchyroll, Amazon, Hulu. We've shared our thoughts, but we'd like to hear yours as well, in the comments below and on our Discord. The Night Parade has now come to an end. Next episode, Wandering Sun.